Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the accounting for customer returns in a perpetual inventory system. So when companies sell goods to customers, um, the capitalized cost of those goods are expensed. That's cost of goods sold. The value of the inventory is lowered on your balance sheet, right? So you've lost the inventory, you expense it, inventory goes down. That's what happens during a typical sale of product to a customer. However, any subsequent reclamation of that inventory, in this case, we're specifically going to talk about customers are returning the goods to us, must be added back to the inventory account, okay, because you've got the inventory back, removed from the COGS account because it's no longer an expense if you have the asset back, and recorded as a reduction in your previously recorded revenue. So as part of the sale, you recorded revenue from that customer, you've got to now reduce that revenue by the amount of the return. So let's see this in action. All right, $90 worth of canned goods for which Walmart charged customers $200 on account are returned. Walmart determines they are not damaged. We'll talk more on that last sentence in a little bit. So let's think about this. Um, originally, Walmart sold these goods to customers. So let's, let's think about what that original sale would look like. So original sale, not sale, sale. When you sell goods, that requires a double journal entry. The first half being the recognized revenue based on the price you charge the customer. It was, these were sales on account. So accounts receivable, $200. Sales revenue, $200. You also have to record the expense half of this journal entry, which is your inventory leaving and your associated cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold, 90. Inventory down, 90. This is your standard merchandise sale journal entry, a double entry, half revenue, half expense. This being based on what you charge the customer, this being based on what was the internal cost to you that you had capitalized for that inventory. All right, so that's what the sale originally looked like. Now we've got a customer returning the goods. The simplest starting point to a customer returning the goods is reverse the sale, because that's essentially what's happening, right? Instead of you giving customer good, customer giving you money, it's going the other way. Customer giving you good, you giving customer money, or in this case, promise to give money, right? So let's reverse the sale. We would undo the sales rev, 200. We would undo the receivable. 200. This is the return. Notice all I did was flip-flop this, right? Instead of recording revenue, I'm undoing the revenue. Instead of recording a receivable, I'm undoing the receivable. This is going to net to cancel out. This is going to net to cancel out. I also do the same with the second half. I put the inventory back in my inventory system for the price I originally paid for it and I remove the cost of goods sold because I no longer have that cost. I got the inventory back. It's not an expense to me anymore. This is simply reversing this piece. So a return is essentially undoing a sale with one very important exception. We are never going to debit sales revenue because that would be misleading for investors. When investors look on your income statement and they see sales revenue, that is supposed to indicate to investors the amount of sales you made. Well, you made this sale. It got undone because the customer returned something, but that's a different situation than not being able to sell it at all, right? Think about this from an investor perspective. Do you simply want to know what was the net amount the company sold? Or do you want to know what was the company able to sell what got returned, because maybe there's a product problem, whatever the case may be, defect, so forth and so on. The second is more informative to investors. How much did you originally sell? How much got returned? And so we're not going to debit sales revenue. Instead, we are going to debit an account called sales, returns, and allowances. Allowance, uh, I misspelled that. Allowances. Let me just go ahead and kind of eases up a little space here so you can see this better. 
we're going to debit an account called sales returns and allowances. Everything else is going to stay as I showed you. So you literally are flip-flopping the original sale. The one difference being you're not going to debit the sales revenue. Instead, you're going to debit a separate account called sales returns and allowances. This account is a contra revenue. Contra revenue. And what I mean by that is it is going to go on the income statement. It's going to go on the income statement in your revenue section, but as a reduction to revenue, not an addition to it. It's going to give investors more information about what actually happened to your sales. And of course, in the process, it accomplishes the goal. It removes the revenue you previously recorded by reducing overall revenue. I'll talk about that more in just a moment. Now, before I get there, though, Let's talk about this bottom piece. I have a lot of what ifs, and I want to show you slight variations on everything that occurred up here. First, what if the goods had been partially damaged prior to return? All right. Even if the goods are partially damaged, you still have to give the customer their money back. So the top half of this journal entry wouldn't change. But let's say the goods, um, let's say half of them were bad, half of them were good. Well, then you'd only put half the value back in your inventory, and you'd only undo half of the expense that you incurred. Because if you can't resell that one half of goods you got back, well, then you've still incurred the cost of those goods. They're gone either way. So that's what happens in the case of, say, a partial damage. The next what if I have is, what if they've been fully damaged? Well, again, you got to give the customer their money back. But if these things are fully damaged, you can't put the inventory back on your books. It's worthless. Also, you can't undo the expense because guess what? That was still a cost to you. You're, you're eating that cost, essentially. And so that second half of the return just goes away in the case of a fully damaged situation. Finally, I say, what if Walmart offered the customers an allowance to keep the goods? So an allowance is where you say, hey, don't return it. I know it's bad. How about I give you an extra discount and you just keep them? Well, in that case, again, Walmart wouldn't be getting the goods back, so there'd be no second half of this, but you also wouldn't be giving them a full refund. If it was an allowance situation, it would just be whatever you agreed to. Hey, I'm giving you a 10% allowance. So this would only be $20 removed from their receivable and reduced to your revenue because you're just giving them a $20 discount. You're not giving them a full refund. That's a mutually beneficial situation. Walmart doesn't have to take as big of a hit to its sales, the customer gets to keep the goods, still potentially sell them, um, or, or still potentially use them, but they save money on it, right? So mutually beneficial. So three what ifs that are all just variations on this one journal entry, but this is your basic situation if it's just a normal return. And then of course, you gotta take in consideration, did the value of the return change, or was there no value left in the return? Or did you not take the goods back, but you offered them a slightly discounted uh, refund? So those are your variations on the return. I said I would talk just a little bit more about sales returns and allowances, so here we go. If we think about our income statement, look at the green boxes, ignore the blue for a minute. Merchandising companies have sales revenue. They remove from that their cost of goods sold, which tells investors what the gross profit of the inventory was. From there, they take out their other expenses and that gets to net income. Now we're adding a new piece to this. We're saying, well, you know, before you get to cost of goods sold, there is this idea that a customer could return things or could be granted an allowance to avoid a return called sales returns and allowances. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, why don't we give investors that additional information? Sales revenue minus the returns and allowances, then tell investors what your net sales were. From there, you can proceed as normal. Take out your cost of goods sold, figure out gross profit, go all the way down to net income, right? This is a contra revenue reducing your total revenue uh, to tell investors what was your net revenue or your net sales of the goods. That just gives investors more information about what truly happened in the business rather than simply saying, well, here were the net sales and we go from there, right? We're telling them we sold more, but some of it got returned. All right, that is it for customer returns. They can be a little tricky because of that flip-flop of sales revenue to sales returns and allowances. So make sure you kind of, you know, keep that in the back of your mind. It may be something you just have to memorize. Um, but other than that, they're, they're, they're kind of straightforward. You just have to get used to the different variations you might see on it, value of inventory, so forth and so on. Um, hope you found this helpful. 
Hope you join me for another video.